think what we're going to do here, using my file, which is not a straight edge, but it's a straight enough edge. I want to cut down the center of this line here. Then I need to come around this, kind of like that, and up around here, and then I can make a straight line through there. Yeah, you know, I better come over a little bit more. I don't want to take out any of that tea. This is going to be a floppy mess, I know it already. Well, let's set up the action camera and get to cutting. looks better already. These pieces are pretty rusted, but they're not in too bad a shape. This one, I accidentally nicked the uh, the T with my angle grinder when I was cutting off that tube, but I can fill that back in with a weld. It's not too big of a deal here. This hole is where that uh, tube went through. I think I'm just gonna cut right through and out of here at a nice 90 degree and put that in where it belongs, which would be approximately right about here. All right, we're going to throw these in the blaster and uh, we're going to see exactly how bad the rust pitting is, if there is any, and go from there. If these things are in too bad a shape, we're not going to use them, but I doubt that's the case. i check it out. I could make a little mini front apron. Here we go. <laughs> for a little half-size beetle. And yes, it's been done. Somebody in Finland made a beetle for his son. Just a little tiny beetle. He cut it all into to quarters and then shrunk everything down into tiny little, yeah. It was really cool in the end and I think he put a lawnmower engine or something in the back of it. Anyway, that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> we're back today with my 1956 beetle, also known as Eleanor. And if you remember, she was under six feet of seawater during Hurricane Ivan, which is why this front apron is completely obliterated. Pretty much most of this car was this way. I mean, just completely destroyed, just rotted out to hell. So as a result, I had to replace uh, almost the entire front clip. And because it was off of a 69, it had a shorter hood on it. So what I had to do is I had to add an earlier apron. This one has the lower, more rounded piece. But there's something you may notice, and that's uh, actually incorrect for the 1956 year. Just like the apron in the rear, which has a big capital H on it, I uh, actually made the apron that's on the back there using original parts and a reproduction piece. But right here, this is what I call the quadruple capital T apron or 4T apron. See the capital T here, capital T, capital T, capital T. If you look at this one, there's only two capital T's. So clearly it's wrong. Also the bolt spacing for the, uh, the hinge catch, uh, the hood catch I should say, the latch is up here. This is just different. The holes here are just different. Right here there's no hole. Here you have a hole. This is where that tube is supposed to come through. Uh, the, actually the piece of tube that was out of here this morning, I just broke it off. <laughs> so this is in some pretty bad shape. But what I need to do 
is I need to cut a section of this out that's still usable and graft it onto this so that way I can have my four capital T's. So when the hood is open on this car, people still believe that it's a 1956. It's attention to those small details that really makes all the difference in the world on putting this car back together. But, uh, you know, I could just slap that apron on and be done with it, but uh, when has the duck man ever taken the easy way out? <laughs> Case in point, right there. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get the cutting. You've probably been watching this video. You've seen me do some of it already. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut, well, in this one, cut right down the center of this T over to here, come up this way, and then out. And then I can take that piece and lay it over this, and if I get it clamped together properly, I should be able to cut through both layers and slip that piece inside of there and um, weld it right into place as a perfect fit. Anyway, that's the theory. That's what we're going to try to stick to. If you've been watching this video, you'll see whether or not that worked out. <laughs> so as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly you see next to the subscribe button. You get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. If you'd like to buy a Duckman shirt, which I'm not wearing them because, damn it, they're, they're new. I don't want to destroy them yet. <laughs> but if you'd like a, a Duckman branded shirt or Ski to the Duck or anything else that I do, there's four different designs I currently have up there. One of them has Eleanor on it. So check out duckshit.net forward slash store. I'll put a link down in the video description. It's also here on the screen. Open up your favorite web browser and type it right on in. It'll take you right to the store. Some people reported that it wasn't working right, but um, I can't see any problems on my end. But if you have any errors getting to the Duckshit store, let me know and uh, I'll get it fixed. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. All right, those turned out okay. Uh, I was slowing down on the sandblaster because my water filter for some reason started to not work properly and it started to just clump up the dirt on here. So just, yeah, it was time to stop. But these are pretty good. There's not a whole lot of pitting. The rest of this here, I can just clean it up by hand. But at least now that I know these things aren't completely obliterated. Now what we do need to do figure out approximately where this is going to be and this is why I left half of that T so I could use it for an appropriate spacer now what I do need to do is I also need to because this lip here doesn't want to wrap around the other lip because the OEM lip is smaller than the aftermarket one so I gotta do one of two things either spread it open or cut it off I think I'm gonna go for the spread open technique first. Well, I was really hoping that this hole was going to be... Uh, I guess it is going to be completely covered by this piece. Okay. Yeah, that hole's going to disappear with this patch. Alright, it's going to go on something like that. Alright. I guess we're going time lapse on this one.
Well, that's about all that I can do for today. Uh, <laughs> I ended up getting a service call for Tallahassee. Six hour round trip because the guy out there doesn't have a part because they refused to inventory him with one. Yeah, I got as much done as I could today. And what that meant is I got one side done. And you can see that T, T, it's a little shiny, catching an awful lot of light, but yeah, there you go. Now you can see it. Soaking in phosphoric acid right now to try to coat up that bare metal. But uh, it came along pretty well. This corner in here that I was gonna cut out, it turned out um, I completely forgot about it when my phone started ringing. And then when I started sawing, I went, damn it, I meant to cut a, you know, a square piece out of that so that way there wasn't a hole there. But anyway, I stopped for a moment and went and looked at photos of what the uh, apron actually looks like. And the tube that comes down, comes down through here and then up through a slotted shaped hole. So this is correct. I'm going to um, cut it a little bit bigger. It's a little small on this end because uh, I fixed some of the rust on it. You know, just cutting it out and filling it in. But uh, I will widen up the hole on it a little bit more and uh, make it look a whole lot nicer. Although you're probably not gonna see it anyway because it's gonna be buried under the tube that comes through. Then the tube transverses over this way, or traverses over this way, I should say, to where the uh, latch receiver is, and that attaches here. I'll have to drill two more holes because they belong to here, to here. That one, I can either fill it or I'll just cover it because when you put the, uh, the latch on there, it actually, you don't see that hole, so I may not even bother. The other side I still haven't touched yet, but this is the piece that's gonna go on there. This one has a lot less rust damage than this side did, so it's gonna go in easier, I believe. I think it's going to be less of a problem. Here's the old center part. You can see the four holes I was just telling you about versus the three that are here. So, yeah, somebody's out there, I'm sure, saying, why didn't you just weld the whole damn thing in? Well, it's because it's just, it's shitty. It's just, I don't want to deal with that. It's just, it's too shitty. Too shitty. Although, looking in here, this has a much nicer rolled edge. This doesn't. Damn it. I'm going to have to get in there and roll this edge a little bit then and make it look a little prettier than that because now I can see the difference. Somebody's going to know right away that's a replacement apron. Damn it. All right, well, that's something I'll deal with later. In fact, the whole stamping is just nicer. It's just it's, it's much more um, pronounced than it is over here. This is very gently stamped. But you know what? Fuck it. It's going to get done. It's going to look good. And it's going to look good enough. The rear apron actually isn't even an H apron at all. It's, it's a later apron, which had a different shape to it, and I made the H fit on it anyway. So you know what? Unless you got one car next to the other, nobody's really gonna notice it. There has to be a time that I have to say no more, and I have to stop. <laughs> I think if I just keep working on these little tiny details, I'm never ever gonna finish this car. And it needs to go off to Earl in the next couple weeks. So I gotta finish working on this thing. I gotta get this apron repaired and installed. Once that's done, I gotta get to the driver's side door and then just go around the car and just fill in a whole bunch of little holes here and there. I have to fill a couple of patches in the, uh, the tail light uh, pieces. They have some holes in them. And uh, the tops of the doors where the window comes in on the passenger side, it kind of comes to a point because when I pulled the vent window out of uh, the door, it, it kind of mangled it. So I have to fix that too. And it doesn't want to bend. So I'm going to have to put a relief cut it and then weld it back straight again. So I got to fix that crap too. But anyways, for now, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. Don't forget to check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media. Check out DuckShit.net forward slash store for all my merch. Now, I'd have a piece of my merch out here, but I'm in a hurry to get things wrapped up so I can get to work. So, sorry, you guys. I haven't got it to show. But if you watched yesterday's video, you've already seen that. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow.